It looks like the response to our Packard Bell experiment was pretty positive. We're going to put this new old stock set in service and kind of document the life with an hour meter. In the previous part, I was trying to get a cathode fuse for the horizontal output that would kind of protect things if something was to go wrong. And it kept blowing a 250 milliamp fuse even though it was only drawing 200 milliamps. So I think what it is is it needs a capacitor in parallel with it to take the pulses. I think even though it's just 200 milliamps DC average, I think there's you know 14 kilohertz pulses or whatever that are a lot bigger than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the voltage across it here. So with the fuse open, so I know what size capacitor, what, what voltage capacitor I need to put in there. I'm going to pull the horizontal out, the oscillator out. It's interesting it drops so it looks like I need about a 200 volt capacitor um, I don't know if I should go with electrolytic or film I'm thinking about that I just want something that's got pretty low ESR at 15 kilohertz I did look at some other schematics that fuse the cathode and they use a hundred microfarads so I might just go with that Okay, I got a 47 microfarad 200 volt capacitor and so it would blow it pretty quick. Uh, we got a half a volt drop across the fuse. So one thing neat about this is you can just measure that drop and then adjust the cathode current for the minimum voltage drop across the fuse. Adjust the efficiency coil been running for an hour or so and the fuse seems solid so yeah we needed a capacitor in parallel I should probably also put a small resistor in parallel because if the fuse blows the capacitor will charge up to 150 volts and when you go to pop the new fuse in the capa the charged capacitor will just pop the fuse so I might do that uh, I tried to bend everything back to keep it away from the heat this was almost stupid placement. I also removed both of the light bulbs from the front. And you can, you can tell by how clear these are how low hour this TV is. So I don't need those. I might as well get them out of there and save them for when the project's over. If I want to put a new CRT and retube the TV, it should be new again, right? depending on what fails over the life test. Getting the test TV installed and put into service, the only modification I'm doing here is I've configured this transformer as a buck setup. So I'm back feet, backwards feeding and I'm taking about oh five to eight volts off of the line uh, and putting a more responsible like 115 to 117 volts into the TV. The TV's specced at 117 but I think th this runs a little higher 122 or so. So this knocks this right here knocks uh, uh, I don't know 6 to 8 volts off of the line and I also put a circuit breaker there for some added protection. <laughs> Without the bucking transformer, it's at 280 watts draw right now. With the bucking transformer, just taking about 7 or 8 volts off of the line, it comes from 280 down to 246. That's huge.
that's a that's a lot less heat and that includes whatever wattage the transformer might be drawing so now it's time to hook up the hour meter and start the science experiment so we know the wattage 246 and we can easily figure out the total just by the hour meter and we can figure sort of figure out the cost by averaging the hour meters connected we're about to commence the science project right now This is a non resettable hour meter. One minute. You can tell this is an old music video, it's four by three, full screen. Check out the color. Look at how there's no smearing. Look at how good that looks. Keep in mind this is a 68, 1968 tube color TV.